What a week in the market. After a weak bearish start to the week, closing below $30,000 for the first time since literally January 1st, guys. So the market was definitely panicking on Tuesday, but then we got a big bullish bounce on Wednesday. As you can see here in this move, it was a 7.8% move up. And this came off the B word conference that was featuring, of course, the one and only Elon Musk. Jack Dorsey and Kathy Wood as they discussed Bitcoin for over an hour. So ever since then, the market's pretty much been in indecision. They don't know which way to go now. And now we got to see what can we expect throughout the weekend. Now, is it going to be a bearish weekend? Is it going to be bullish? We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to highlight some of the stuff discussed in the B word conference and do an analysis and see if there's any trades that we can look to take this weekend to make some profits. So stay tuned guys. Let's go ahead and dive into today's analysis. Hey, what's up? Jay here and welcome to Bitcoin daily, bringing you guys the best tips, tutorials, and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful investors. The goal of this channel is to empower you, the community, with the knowledge and resources to help you take yourself and your wealth to that next level. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and turn on the notification bell. Also, don't forget to smash the like button as it helps us a ton. It takes us hours to make these videos and it takes you a couple seconds to hit the like button. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So the first big main thing that happened this week was the B word conference. So this was a live conference where they had a lot of different topics, a lot of different speakers, but the headliners of this event was of course, Kathy Wood, Jack Dorsey and Elon Musk. So Kathy Wood is one of the earliest Wall Street investors to get into crypto and has been through enough market cycles to have a nuanced understanding of the space. She revived one of her long standing themes of Bitcoin's rules based monetary policy, especially relevant now as central banks operate on unbounded monetary policy. She also touched on recent inflationary concerns, specifically Art's belief that deflationary concerns are likely to emerge in the long term. Twitter and Square CEO Jack Dorsey has been a consistent ally to Bitcoin. Dorsey highlighted a few of his projects dedicated to a more decentralized future, including Square's upcoming self-custody hardware wallet and Blue Sky, a project to develop an open and decentralized social media platform. And of course, the controversial Elon Musk. His contributions to the discussion garnered mixed reactions from the community. Most notably was his admission that outside of Tesla and SpaceX shares, Bitcoin is his biggest investment. Additionally, his now famous statement, I pump but I don't dump, was backed by his revelation that SpaceX, in addition to Tesla, holds Bitcoin. He affirmed that the three have never sold their Bitcoin holdings and have no plans on selling. He also went on to say that Tesla should probably be accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment sometime soon. So although in the long run, that's all definitely very, very bullish for Bitcoin and the entire crypto market. I know a lot of you are still worried about where the market currently is right now, whether we're in a bull or bear market and where it's going next. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we are today and what we could possibly expect this weekend. So you can see that everything's pretty much flat on the day, right? There's not really too much There's a few coins that are down, you know, very small, but everything's pretty much flat. Bitcoin's pretty much flat in the last seven days as well. The fear and greed index is currently at 23. So, you know, nothing has really changed there. Now, if we take a look here at the at the chart, you'll see that we are now at the top of this channel where we've been kind of descending down, right? So we still don't know if we're in a 
descending channel or a falling wedge. Regardless though, um, we're at the top of the current channel. You'll see that earlier in the week, we almost hit that bottom of the channel, but we did get a bounce up before we got to the bottom. And now we're currently sitting at the top. So in order to get above this, we need some, we're gonna need some momentum, we're gonna need some volume, and we're gonna need something to push the price up. So that breakout point is probably gonna be around $33,000 is what it looks like right now. So if we get above 33,000, you can expect a push up to 34 to 35 five thousand dollars and we test this level up here which as you guys already know we tested many times over the past month so this fibonacci level continues to hold remember the 618 level in the fibonacci is considered the golden ratio um, so it's the biggest level in the fibonacci sequence so that's currently where what we have here as support and it's what has held us up here you know at that twenty eight thousand level that has not let the price get beyond that for now so although it's holding it doesn't mean it's going to hold forever we need to get some movement up and out of this channel if not it's only a matter of time before we we you know end up breaking down and uh, just kind of free falling down here, right? So like we said before, if we were to fall beyond 30 and you know beyond this Fibonacci level, that $28,000 level, there's really no volume here. There's no, no points of interest all the way to around that $24,000 level. So that would, would be the next volume shelf. So it's pretty much, you know, we drop from here, we're pretty much falling all the way down here. That's 24,000. And if we go beyond that, then look, the next points of interest and shelf volumes are over here at the $20,000 mark. So that's why we need these levels to hold up here because if we fall beyond them, it's going to get very ugly and scary very quickly. So, so far we are holding, but we need movement to the upside guys. If we don't get it, that's what we're looking at. If we do get that movement to the upside, then like I said, that 35,000 is going to be again, that resistance that we need to get through beyond that will be around 38,000. And then of course, 40 to 42,000. Remember, I've been saying this for the last few months, $42,000 is the line in the sand which turns us from bearish back to bullish if we can get above it. Um, as long as we remain below it, we're still bearish. At the end of the day, guys, in the last 12 months, Bitcoin is still up over 100%. Year to date, we're still up over 11%. And, you know, this is a long term game, guys. You know, this is just for short term is what we're watching right now and what people are afraid of right now. But if you believe in the long term potential of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, this is a time to be entering into the market, adding funds, dollar cost averaging your way in because you have to think in terms of the next five years, not in terms of the next day, the next week, the next month. So just keep that in mind. Trade setups that I'm going to be watching over the weekend is a break above 33,000 for a long position. And I'll also, also be watching a breakdown below 32,000 for a short position on Bitcoin as well. So over 33 is going to be a long position, under 32 will be a short position and uh, I'll be I'll be taking profits very aggressively on both of those trades. So that's pretty much it for this video today, guys. Make sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I hope you guys have a wonderful Friday and wonderful overall weekend. I hope we all get to make some profits. That's pretty much it, guys. I'll see you guys on Monday. As always, peace and love.